Hello everyone. For those of you that follow my channel, you might know that I will be competing at BattleBots this next upcoming season with Copperhead. Copperhead is a 250 pound drum spinning robot made out of a ton of really heavy and thick steel. As soon as I mentioned that I was going to be on BattleBots, I got a lot of questions from veteran builders and some other people, you know, kind of asking about details about the bot and some other things. So what I wanted to do in this video is give you a detailed look at the drive system for Copperhead, since we're doing things um, a little bit differently than most people. Um, instead of doing a brushed or brushless drive, we're actually going to a completely new technology altogether. And in this box are our prototype motors and speed controllers. So yeah, let's dive right in and see what the drive system looks like like for Copperhead. Some of you might know that my day job consists of largely doing um, product development in energy management and energy monitoring solutions. So through my contacts at work, I actually came across um, a couple new exciting technologies and I thought this might actually work well in a combat robot scenario. So I decided to contact them and I think it's been about, I think it's been about six months now that we've been developing this new type of motor. Um, we'll kind of get into that later. It's not exactly a motor, but it's not, not a motor. Um, but Anyway, we developed this new type of motor and we finally have the prototypes and so far the tests look really good. So this could be a game changer for the um, combat robot genre, we will see. But it is kind of an interesting technology, so I wanted to share it with you and show you how this incorporates into the drive system of Copperhead. So here is our box from China and here are our samples, so let's open this up and see what's inside. Most drive systems rely on two primary components, at least from the electrical standpoint. You've got the motors themselves, and here I have the two motors, and then you have the electronic um, speed controller or um, motor driver, however you want to call it, that actually is sending the signals to the motor and making them spin. So here we have one of our prototype ESCs. Um, this is one of the flux cores that is going to be powering these two motors. Now, as I said earlier, these motors are not brushed, they're not brushless, they kind of fall somewhere outside of that. These are called flux actuated kinematic engines. So it's a bit of a different technology and there's a lot of debate online about the kinematic engine part of it, whether that is still a motor, whether it's more an engine, and I personally feel that it falls somewhere in between the two. Um, I'm not really going to get into the technicals in this video because that's not really what it's about, but I just wanted to make you aware of what these are. And they do use a flux core, which is really at the end of the day the same thing as an ESC, but it works a little bit different. So let's now talk about why this is different than the traditional motor and a traditional motor driver. So what's the difference between a flux activated kinematic engine and a standard motor? Well to answer that question we first need to know how a standard motor works. A standard motor relies on voltage and current to power it and make the shaft spin and then make the wheels and all the other stuff spin. However with a flux activated kinematic engine, we're actually relying on flux, not current. And the reason that is, is if you've ever um, dealt with a standard ESC or dealt with a standard motor, you know that you can only handle so much current. You can only push so much current through those wires. Then you end up with like an eight gauge wire, a six gauge wire, and then you have these huge ESCs that can handle several hundred amps. Well, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is the MOSFETs and um, everything on the actual speed controller can also handle flux in instead. It always talks about handling you know, current, like, oh, this can handle 100 amps or 200 amps worth of current, but you can actually handle significantly more flux than you can current. And a standard, um, let's just say 12 gauge wire, I think maybe you're comfortable throwing uh, 100 amps down it, let's say. Well, with flux, you can do several times that amount of power. So these motors and the um, flux core here don't rely on current at all. They kind of do away with that concept and they rely strictly on flux alone, so you can get a lot more power out of a lot smaller package and everything remains a lot cooler too. So let's get this all set up on the workbench and I'll show you how it works. So here is the basic setup for testing. Up top we have the flux actuated kinematic engine. We have the flux core back here and I'm using just a 6S battery. This is a battery out of crippling depression. Ultimately we will be running this off 36 cells. It takes a lot of voltage to get the power that we need out of this, um, but just for testing this should be just fine. There's no real load on this. Now you might notice that this is quite small. 
Flux actuated kinematic engines are much different. And even though this looks small, this is extremely powerful. I've got it bolted down as good as I can. And I've got these two big six inch clamps down here. Um, this is really the safest I can do for testing. I would rather get a little bit safer and get behind some kind of blast shield, but this should work for the test. So let me plug in the battery, connect the radio and um, do a little spin up test. Okay, everything looks good. Geez, this thing freaks me out every time I was across the other side of the room and the door going into the rest of the house was rattling a little bit. So yeah, um, I think we need to do a little bit better balancing on this, um, but that's okay. So now let's get this inside the bot and do some drive testing. All right, so this is the first test drive of Copperhead. We got Zach here, we got Pete. Let's drive this thing. All right, let's, let's somebody say He was gonna scrape so much. You might have noticed in the video we were using these um, relatively small wheels here, and there's two reasons for that. The first reason is we don't have our um, real wheels ready, they're still being molded, and um, also in the video we were only running at somewhere between half a percent and one percent throttle. We did that because we didn't really want to screw up these wheels too much. You can see that they're already considerably compromised just from that little drive test. These are just some wheels that we got really cheap at Harbor Freight just for the testing. In addition to tearing up the wheels, we also didn't want to deal with the ramifications of sonic booms and things like that. Um, we did go up to 5% throttle at one point. We blew out some windows on the neighbor's house, so we didn't really want to mess with that. So just for testing, we like to stick around half a percent or 1%. For the final version of the robot, we're going to be needing um, significantly more tread than what these can provide. And doing a little bit of calculations, we found that a four foot long tread is really the ideal to where we can actually maximize the amount of energy or torque that we're putting into the ground. So uh, we're ending up with these four foot wide custom molded tires for each side, and that should give us the best balance of drivability, maneuverability, and also speed. Overall, we're very happy with the performance of the kinematic engines over like a brushless drive system. They're a little bit more complicated to implement. You need much higher voltage. The programming on the ESCs is just a nightmare. Um, and right now we're working with just kind of prototype parts. So we're not really sure how this will all go, but we're really pleased to be bringing this technology to BattleBots for Copperhead. So for all those teams out there, when I announced I was coming to BattleBots and you were trying to get some information from me about what our drive system was like and what our weapon system was like, here you go. We are using the Flux Activated Kinematic Engines. I hope that helps you out. So anyway, um, check out more of the videos coming up on Copperhead and also be sure to check out my Facebook page as well as the Caustic Creations page for all the updates on our Copperhead build. Thanks for watching and check us out on BattleBots. So we're here with Copperhead, Team Costa Creations. We've got Test Subject 1. Found this guy on Craigslist. 10 bucks for two hours. We're going to test out Copperhead. Yeah, where do you put your feet? Oh, you're long, you're even taller. I always put my feet here, but I don't know if you said that. I'm not that flexible. Okay. <laughs> It works! <laughs>